I will show the different types of telephone networks that are encountered in phones that are made by companies other than Automatic Electric. Automatic Electric was their own design that was unique to them and them only. When you get into the telephones from Europe or non-United States made telephones, the packages were different amongst the manufacturers, but the speech network was pretty much the same. The original design of the, I would say, more modern network was Bell Labs when the 500 model telephone was developed. They had two components in the very, very, very early 500 sets. They had an equalizer, which was in a small cube, and then they had a network, 425A. The 425 series network was licensed to anybody who wanted to pay the royalty fees to AT&T. So ITT, Stromberg Carlson, and others bought the, light, the rights to the network design. They electrically are identical. They're just in different form packages. But a 425 network, regardless of the manufacturer, you could take a Premier 425 telephone set, which is a North Supply product that's still in production, and replace a Western Electric 425 C or D or E or F network, and it would work perfectly fine. It would just look different. So I have here a 1964 Western Electric 425 E telephone network. They've made a few changes. Originally, they had a lot of leads that were soldered in the early days, so the networks were not really replaceable. And in reality, they wouldn't fail, so you wouldn't have to replace them. I have personally worked on probably seven to 10,000 telephones in my lifetime, and I've only had three or four networks that ever failed. And most of the time, there was a reason for the failure other than just it dying. Here is a Western Electric 4228 network. Of the networks I've had to replace because of failure rate, this network is the one that fails. And what fails is the design of the components. If this telephone is dropped from, I'm going to say, a three to four foot drop from let's say a desk to the floor, the odds are it's going to fail because the components are hanging on this porcelain. So an impact on the floor can break the leads on the coil. And I have had to replace these. Not very many of them, but I have had to replace them. But again, this is just a newer network from the previous one shown. This particular network, because of the plastic on it, was for a touch-tone telephone. If it was a rotary phone, it would be missing a couple of leads and they'd have a different color of plastic. But again, that was just, you know, if you're buying screws in the assembly for a penny or two apiece, there's no need to make millions of something that would never be used. Here is a Stromberg Carlson speech network. It's a 425 as well. They have screws for the line to the wall, so the tip ring and ground, and then the remaining leads are for um, spades that you connect the hook switch handset and all the components to it. This was just Stromberg's design. Stromberg did manufacture early on networks that looked like that. But as they modernized their operation, they came up with that network. The next one is an ITT network. And again, it's a 425 network, does the same exact functions, and is pin-to-pin -pin compatible with the ones that I've just shown. This is ITT. 
ITT did make a network that looked like that, except the can was made out of plastic instead of aluminum. And I think they did make metal cans too, but I don't remember. Then here's a network that was made by a foreign company overseas uh, making telephone sets for North Supply under the Premier name. This is a pin-to-pin -pin compatible network with any of the other ones, Westerns, ITT, Strombergs, and so forth. These are very good networks, never had one fail. I have here an induction coil that was in the 300 and 400 series of telephones made by Western Electric, North Electric, as well as uh, uh, other manufacturers purchased induction coils from Western Electric for their telephones. North Electric had a few networks from Western and I believe they might have made their own network as well or induction coil. The difference between the induction coil, it's got a transformer just such as the Premier has a transformer. Inside of the Western Electric network is a transformer as well similar to this. The difference is you have resistors and capacitors. This is called an induction coil because it's not an electronic component. It's just a spool with wires on it and terminals. This has electronic components. The newer phones had the resistors for limiting um, clicks in the receiver as well as on the receiver and also he had these on the F and RR terminal for reducing clicks, RF clicks that would be picked up in a radio on a rotary dial phone potentially. So also it has a ringing capacitor on the network as where the induction coil does not have a capacitor. Back in the days of the induction coils in the 300 and 400 series phones, they called them condensers instead of capacitors. They just, again, modernized their terminology. So that is a brief explanation of, re of induction coils and telephone networks. If you have a telephone that is using an induction coil, and if you were patient enough, you could use a network to make the phone work. You just have to figure it out. Not a big deal. So if you have a telephone missing what is called a subset and you need to make a cheap subset, you can tear apart a modern phone to get the needed part for that. And the Telephone Collectors International Library, as well as other um, forums, do have this information.